Hello and welcome to Tech Teach, the show that explores exciting new ways to use technology in your teaching. I'm Dennis Neufeld, and this is being recorded in Abbotsford, British Columbia on July 28th, 2016. In this week's episode, I'll be taking a look at Google Street View and how it can be used in your classroom. I'll cover how to get started with Street View, how to enhance Street View using another Google product called Cardboard, and lastly, I'll give you some easy ways to use this tech in your teaching. First of all, what is Street View? At this point, the Street View function inside of Google Maps has just about become a household term. Many people use Street View regularly to take a detailed look at a trip's destination to get a sense of the area and what the location might look like. Some people even use Street View to drive their route in advance. Practice makes perfect, right? But most people aren't aware that Google Street View function actually has its own dedicated app for mobile devices. That's right. While the app does basically contain the same features as the Google Maps function, there are some important differences, which I'll get to shortly. So here's how to get started with Street View. The app downloads like any other app on your mobile device. I'm using an iPhone and the App Store. If you're using an Android device, simply access the Google Play Store and search for Street View. The process will be nearly identical to this one. Locate the app and hit download. Breeze through the introductory menus. You need to give Google access to some of your phone's functions, such as the camera and GPS, but this is pretty much standard for apps like this one. Once the app has finished its setup process, you'll see a large map similar to this one. The next step is to do what everyone does, and that is to find your house and virtually stand in front of it. This is not my real house. The app can then be used to drive around looking at anything that was photographed by the Google Street View car. A relatively new feature that has been added to Street View, both in the app as well as in Google Maps, is the Photosphere function, commonly called 360 degree photographs, or 360 pictures. These will allow users to stand in one place and look around in all directions, including up and down. Google has provided many 360 pictures of famous locations and landmarks that allow users to experience places such as the Eiffel Tower, inside the Sydney Opera House, or Egyptian pyramids. But the feature that sets the Street View app apart from Google Maps is that it enables users to create their own photospheres. That's right again! In fact, Google Street View is absolutely filled with user-generated content. Before recording this episode, it was actually more difficult for me to find a Google-sponsored photosphere than it was to find great-looking 360 images uploaded by the general population. You now have the ability to share a unique location with the rest of the world, or even just with your family and friends. Check out this photo shared by Tim Mortensen atop Whistler Mountain just outside the Roundhouse Lodge. In a moment, I'll list some great classroom applications for Street View, but by now you're probably already thinking about sharing certain locations with your students. Maybe there's a spot in your favorite hike that would be perfect for some earth science curriculum, but you could never take your entire class with you. Or maybe you're taking your first graders to the fish hatchery, but a small handful of students aren't able to attend. What better way to capture some key visuals and share it with them? Creating a photosphere is very simple. You just hit the yellow plus button in the lower right-hand corner. You'll see an option for connecting to a Bluetooth-enabled spherical camera. This is the easiest way to take 360-degree photos, but it is the most expensive as you need to purchase a spherical camera. You also have the option of importing photospheres that you've already created, perhaps with another app. I'll select Cameron to use my device's built-in camera. This will launch a guided process for capturing a photosphere. The process consists of pivoting your camera to center the orange dots in a white circle on your screen. It takes about three minutes to finish capturing one photosphere. Many experts, including a popular website for 360-degree photography called 360 Cities, recommend using a 360-degree tripod for this process to ensure accurate image stitching, just like a panorama image. But I have found through experimentation that making an effort to hold your device in space, rotating and pivoting around the lens, not the center of your device, makes for acceptable results. Rob Nelson, a popular vodcaster and filmmaker, recommends keeping people and objects at least three or four feet away from the lens to help with image stitching. This is good advice. I created an image in the forest while on a bike ride with my kids. I hadn't heard this advice yet, and now my bike looks like it was sent through a wood chipper. Whoops. Once your image is complete, click the green check mark, wait for the app to stitch your creation together, and voila, you've got a photosphere. The final step is to decide whether you want your image to be public or private. If public, you'll need to assign a location. The more accurate your location, the better, as it will help you and your students find it much easier. Giving it a clear and appropriate name also helps. To take your Photosphere experience to the next level, try pairing the Street View app with Google Cardboard, also available in the App Store and Google Play. Dieter Bonn of The Verge, a popular technology-centered YouTube channel, describes Cardboard as a light sampling of the virtual reality experience. This app requires that the user has a virtual reality headset. Google makes one that can be purchased for under $20, and it is literally made of cardboard. Huh? 
I bought mine, the Viewmaster headset, at Best Buy for $29.99 and it works great. There are of course premium options for those wanting something a little more sophisticated. With Google Cardboard installed in your mobile device, you can access 360 photos in Street View just as you would normally. But in the top right corner of the screen, you'll see a cardboard logo that looks like a small set of goggles. Once clicked, your screen will divide into the left eye and right eye formats, meaning that your phone is ready to be placed inside the headset. The user can now interact with the image by turning their head to look around rather than dragging their finger. This is great for giving users the feeling of being in the space. As a side note, this function is also available for 360 videos on YouTube. So with all of these amazing features, what are some practical ways that you can use this tech in your teaching? If you're a language arts teacher, consider using visual writing prompts. You may have done this in the past using regular 2D images, but think about how each student would experience a 360 degree image. The variety of image interpretations would be vast. English and drama teachers could challenge their students to use Street View and Photospheres to tell a visual story. How can they use location and facial expression to communicate character and emotion? Drama teachers could link 360 videos to the Street View app as a form of location performance. The virtual reality environment could be an exciting new performance venue. Social studies classes could explore exciting locations without leaving the classroom. The possibilities are virtually endless. Jeff Utecht of The Thinking Stick provides a list of his top 10 ways to use Google Street View in the classroom. I recommend checking out his blog. You'll be able to find the link in the description below. All right, well, I've shown you how to get started with Google Street View. I've explained how to create your first photosphere. I've described how you can soup up your virtual reality experience using Google Cardboard. And I've given you a handful of ways to use these apps in your classroom. If you have any questions, or if you'd like to contribute to the list of classroom applications, leave a comment below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time on Tech Teach. I'm Dennis Neufeld. Thanks for watching.